I stayed in budget for this Sephora sell the best I could. My first order was in budget. I consolidated everything. I put them all in here. I swear I stayed in budget, but then I bought more and I made a second order and a third order and my tummy is grumbling, I'm hungry. The road to is paved with good intentions and I swear I had good intentions when I placed my order, the first one. The second one and the third one, the, I just, I goofed. I had a moment of weakness. Everybody was posting their orders. Mine got trapped in Nevada and I was just like, what's going on with my order? Order, and then I was like, oh, let me keep shopping around looking. Window shopping, I swear it was window shopping at first. And then everybody was posting theirs and I was like, ooh, maybe I need that, maybe I should get that. And I overdid it. <laughs> I goofed. So I ended up getting three things, or at least three orders. I forgot to mention in this video that my that my hair purchases the hair mask that's also included, but I didn't put it in this box and it's in the shower. I used it last night. I wasn't about to go pull it out of the shower and try to show you guys, but it's there. It was the one I mentioned from my previous video and I loved it. I am going to get through this box as quickly as I can because there's just so much I want to do today. But I forgot that I'm going to be using my Danessa Myricks Groundwork Blooming Romance Palette and did my brows. I said now I'm even more upset. All those comments about you can't use this one for your brows and out of spite I want to and I'm over here messing it up already. That's okay. If you watched anything from my previous video, I was trying to stay within a budget. I wanted to keep it under $300. I swear my first order was in my budget. I kept it down. I was proud of myself. I posted online the night the Sephora sale went live. I was like, yay, I did it. I got my order. I'm in my budget. No judgment here. Judgment free zone. Save that mess. We all have our vices. I am not doing my hair until after this is all done. The first thing I'm gonna be using is the Milk Makeup. This thing, oh, this thing caught my attention. The Cloud Glow Weightless Cloud Like Foam Primer. I was so intrigued when I saw it. I was like, yeah, that's going in my basket. I am trying that because this is apparently the season that everybody wants to release everything glow. Your face needs to be seen from space. Ah, this thing looks amazing. So I was actually surprised at how small it is when it arrived. It's very tiny. I'm really hoping I didn't waste my money on this. Martina loves it, so I'm hoping it'll be great. But she's combo skin and I am more dry. There is only 27 mLs of product in this bad boy and it's a six month shelf life. It better not sit on my shelf for six months. I better love this and get my money's worth. I haven't even looked into how I'm supposed to use this. Like, ooh. You know what I need to do is get this box off of, whoa. So I don't think this is gonna do so hot for my deep crevices up here, my canyons. But we're gonna do what we can. Ooh, that's a pleasant scent. What is that? What's in here? Whoa, this, that is nice. That's not overpowering. It smells really nice. What is this? Hmm. Okay, well I'm terrible at scents, so there will be no description from me, but this primer is supposed to be a, an illuminating primer. Okay, it's made with turmeric extract for a smooth glowy base before makeup application. Okay. And oh shoot, I forgot to put my sunscreen on. Oh, I was gonna use my sunscreen. This is the Tula sunscreen. I've been using this one for a little while. Absolutely always wear sunscreen, my bad. I really hope it's not gimmicky, but oh, it smells nice and it's, it feels really nice on my skin. I like that, okay. I did not buy a new foundation, yay for me. So what I'm gonna do, I wanna color correct, I just do. I have like a little bit of, yeah. But I'm gonna use the Danessa Myricks Groundwork Palette since I'm a cool undertone and see if I can just do a little bit of color correcting with this. First and foremost though, I love doing this. Let's get this little piece of plastic off of there. Oh, this is my favorite part, seeing a new palette for the first time. How beautiful. 
There are definitely some shades in here I can use for color correcting. I just don't know how well it'll work. I'm gonna use a Sigma F64 Soft Conceal Brush. I think I'm gonna take this shade Dreamy on my brush. Let's see if I can use this. Let me see, I'm touching it with my finger. Ooh. Oh, that, I mean, it's pretty pink. Oh, okay, maybe, maybe I can't use this to color correct. That's quite a bit dark. Maybe use the lighter shade. Okay, let's just try it. What's the worst that can happen? Just makeup doesn't look good. I wash it off and redo it. No biggie. Let me try the light pink shade as a color correct under my eyes first. Hmm. Okay, the light pink shade might actually be okay for color correcting under my eyes. I'm experimenting with my lighting because I'm trapped in a little bitty corner here. So if it doesn't look good for this video, I'm very sorry. I will keep working on it. I'm gonna keep using that light shade and just kind of go over where I put a little bit of the darker shades here. Interesting. Okay, for color correcting on some of my dark spots, I don't think it's gonna work because if I use any darker shade here, it's, it's gonna be too dark, right? So in the light shade, while it doesn't like cover too much, I feel like it's okay and it's gonna brighten and my concealer can handle the rest. So that I do like. But for my dark spots here, not so much. Since I was good and I did not buy a new foundation, I'm gonna use my Danessa Myricks Balm Foundation. I've got mine in the shades one and three, and then I'll come right back. You know what? I bought these makeup sponges from Sephora during the sale and I forgot to use these. These are like the sponges I bought for the, what was it, the Louboutin Balm Concealer. I'll use them next time, but these are awesome. At least I'm really hoping they work kind of like the other ones I bought. And I'm kicking myself because I bought the Dior Forever Glow Star Filter. I do not have the Charlotte Tilbury one. I, I never was really interested in buying it. I have the Auric and I really like that one. I saw this one and I was like, oh yeah, I'm buying that one. And why it took a hold over me and Charlotte Tilbury did not, who knows? I have no idea, it just did. One, Dior obviously, but I got mine in the shade zero and I'm so mad that I forgot to put this underneath it. But I, I mean, I'm not too mad because I wanna try this out and see how it works. And it's playing so well with the Danessa Myricks Balm, which by the way, this and the, the Milk Makeup, it looks amazing. I have dry skin, so already I was hyped about the Milk Makeup. And I tend to use this one more for summer because I love the way it controls my oils. And I use this at night and I lost a finger taking care of a patient the other night. And this one's almost empty, I'm so excited. But dang, this I was so looking forward to today and I forgot that I bought it. Ah, let's see, there's coconut in this. So that much I do know. If you're sensitive to coconut, Avoid it. Avoid it like the plague. Hold on here. I'm gonna try to use it as highlight today. Maybe, we'll see. And this packaging is just like the foundation packaging. I love it. I used a little bit of my shower tanner. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, man. It feels so soft to the touch, like silky. Why? Why did I forget that I bought this? Look how gorgeous that is. Okay. I'm gonna use this in another video. Man. I'd say it's 2020. I also bought from The Ordinary, you can't get these like at a discount during the sale, but this is the Multi-Peptides Lash Serum. I ran out of the, what was it? Well, I forget the lash serum I used forever ago and I never wanted to repurchase it because it's so expensive. Even though I got like three to four months out of it, I just hated the price tag of it. And I also got some L-Asorbic Acid Powder. I've got the other component to mix with this already. I'm starting tretinoin. I saw my dermatologist. I'm gonna get that going. I just, I wanna do something other than Botox for my deep canyons up here and my dark spots that showed up after childbirth. But 
I'm hoping that'll kind of do the trick and we'll see. But I do want to powder my eyes, so I picked up the Hourglass Airbrush Pressed Powder, which sold out so fast during the sell. I got mine in Translucent Light. This, it, it has that pinky undertone to it. I wasn't so sure from the pictures for Translucent if that would be better or if I should just do Translucent Light. I went with Translucent Light because it's almost summertime. I do get a little bit darker despite the in-shower stuff, but... This one looks perfect for my fair skin. And I gotta finish off this pre-workout because after this I am going downstairs to my garage and get my workout in. I'm gonna take a Sonia G Worker L and pick that up here. I don't think my under eyes look bad at all with that serum and the balm foundation and the milk makeup primer. This actually looks amazing. I am very picky when it comes to powders and to primers because my forehead, it, it's, everything can look awful really fast, but so far so good. So I'm really interested to see how this wears throughout the day, especially after my workout because that's when I noticed the most shifting in my makeup was after my workout, especially here in my forehead. I'm going to leave that alone for now, but... I do really think it's a pretty powder. I like more luminous powders. I was just so intrigued by this. Yes, I'm dry skin, but there's always something about hourglass that intrigues me and I do like a more matte look right in my T-zone. So I was curious. And I just need things to hold up after workouts, during workouts, after workouts. And I'm cool with wearing makeup for my workouts. You do you. I wanted a brush shaped like this, so similar to this one. Let me see if I can find it. This one for blush and I got it. I love this brush for my bronzer, but it's too big for blush. So I'm really excited to use this one. And speaking of blush, okay. I bought two different, well, I lied. I bought three different blush, blushes, oh, excuse me. So I got the Gucci blush. This one is in the shade Tinder Apricot, 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 whatever you wanna say. I also got the Danessa Myricks in Rose and Brunch. And I bought the Give Beauty Dewy Plump Collagen Cheek Tint in the shade Purple Irises. Okay, this is the first time I've ever bought from Give Beauty, so I do want to use this one today, but also I want to use the Groundwork palette. I am just going to take everything out of the box though and finish going through this because I will forget everything I picked up if I don't. So starting with the Give Beauty. Okay, this one just kind of, it looked really pretty. The color is gorgeous. I love purples. I'm kind of in that purple phase at the moment. Brings back a lot of my childhood memories of makeup. This has eight mLs of product in here. I'll put the price on the screen because I never remember how much I pay. I can't read this without my glasses, so I can't tell you if there's coconut or not in here. It is a 12 month shelf life. This is what it looks like. Oh, I think this is cute. So I haven't been interested in anything from Give Beauty until now. This packaging is adorable. I think it's nice size, nice weight, doesn't feel cheap, doesn't feel too heavy. I'm gonna put a little bit of this on the back of my hand. That is just such a cute color. And I like purples for my cool undertone. I think this is adorable. I kind of want to do an all purple look sometime. And then I got the shade Nightshade in Dewy Plump Collagen Lip Gel. There is a matching purple iris like sh shade, but I didn't want that. And the pictures looked as though it didn't translate the same color on the lips. It looked a cool but also not as prominent and I want my lips to kind of stand out a little bit and not look too cool so I thought the shade nightshade was actually really pretty and it's a berry tone which kind of still falls into that purple family ah. oh that's pretty okay let me try swatching this one here oh that's thick that, she's thick. She is a thick girl. Okay. Hmm. Oh, that smells nice. Oh my gosh. That smells like something from my childhood. What is that? Oh, this is giving me childhood memories. 
Oh my God, that smells amazing. What is that? There is something in here that smells so good. It smells like something that I used to have when I was a kid and I cannot remember for the life of me, but I know this smell and it smells amazing. Vegan, cruelty free. I don't see anything about the the scent though. Oh, it smells so good. Five ml is a product, 12 month shelf life. Man, and that is a beautiful shade. You can see Oh, that lovely purple berry tone. That's pretty. And I 100% picked up the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat. This one is in the shade Red Carpet Red. I wanted a Charlotte Tilbury lip pencil and I love red lipstick. I love red lipstick, so I got a red. Hmm, I wonder if this will match Oh goodness, no, but the Dior Forever Glow Maximizer. I have mine in the shade pink, 100% using this today. Okay, this was from my second purchase. <laughs> Hear me out. I had no intention to buying this. I even said in my recommend or what I wanted video, I wasn't gonna buy this one. I bought it. Lena's video was so pretty in her swatches. And then I kind of went down this rabbit hole and then Alicia, showed me her maximizers and I was like, hold up now. Okay, this, there's no funky scent. There's a faint Dior scent that I'm familiar with. It's very faint. Ooh, ooh, it's so pretty. So I wasn't originally gonna buy it, but then Alicia's video was the linchpin for me. Oh, that is so pretty. Can't wait to use this. Everything just kind of goes together <laughs> on, on this hand. I'm gonna have to use all of it. The Gucci blush 02. I have the light pink shade. What is it, baby pink, I think it is. This one, I wanted for a while. I just didn't wanna pull the trigger on the price, the price the way it is without some sort of discount. That's pretty. I'm not gonna be using this today. It's not gonna go with anything I wanna do. It is pretty. Ooh, okay, hold on here. Build that up a little bit. Lovely, okay. That is a really pretty shade. I like that. And then Danessa, I already told you I was gonna pick this one up 100%. This one is Martina's favorite shade. I have three other shades. This one is a little more mauve, a little more toned down. Ooh, which actually might go well with the look I want to do today but there's so many other things to play with and I've already got an idea in my mind but this is gorgeous this one is just more more neutral these all look so gorgeous let me see if I can blend this out a little bit <laughs> with my finger that's missing a nail ah don't do that don't scare people off Ooh, okay, that's lovely. I never thought I was a giant klutz until I started pushing 40 and then I realized, well, <laughs> I'm a giant klutz. And then I picked up two of the new Danessa Myricks shades from the Color Fix. This is Pastels, Oasis, and Sundays. James Malloy was using these on one of the recent videos that was uploaded announcing the new brush set. And he combined the shade Sundays this purple one here with the Groundworks Blooming Romance palette. These are the shades. I think these are actually really pretty. I've got a couple other of the the shades here, the color fix. I've got a couple nudes, a couple different like neutral colors and bright colors. This isn't my absolute favorite formula, but it, it is a nice formula. And I wanna do what I saw in the video that James did and combine it with the, the Groundworks palette that I have here. And last but not least, this was never on my radar. This is the Guerlain, let's see, what shade is this? 011 Imperial Moon. I bought this because of Martina, <laughs> because of Martina. And I never, I never really cared about any of these Guerlain palettes before, but hers was just so beautiful. And it's a very cool toned quad, which I have an affinity for, I do. But this one, the shades and the just the tones are just so gorgeous. This one also sold out really quickly and then it came back, but there's something about this one that just kind of sparked my interest. There's no smell. This one's not scented. Yay. No baby powder. 
good, good, good. I'm gonna have to play with this one another day though because there's just too much that I wanna do today. And it comes with the, the lovely velvet sleeve here, which I really appreciate for these luxury quads. So I'm gonna start off with my eyes and go in with the B Blooming Romance palette. I'm not gonna use a primer. I have the foundation balm on my lids already. I saw Alicia do this in one of her videos when she got it. She used one of the pink powders here as a setting brightening powder under her eyes. I already used the Hourglass powder. I'm gonna take a Sonia G Detail Pro brush and I'm gonna pick up the actual lightest pink powder here in the palette. I'm gonna do what she did and see how this works as a brightening powder under the eyes. I really can't see a difference and I have to be careful not to put too much powder there anyway. I think I'm gonna have to try that on a day where I don't use the hourglass powder because I wanna really see if I can use it that way. I'm actually gonna start off with the Danessa Myricks Color Fix in the shade Sundays first. I wanna use this all over the lid and then kinda of use the palette to complement it. I'm not gonna do the exact same look that James did. I'm not that talented, but I do wanna use this purple today. I go for a bit of a purple look. And this is a Melt Cosmetics brush, 87 brush, transition. I'm not really sure how well the cream formula is gonna set down over this actually, but he made it look so easy and effortless. And I'm only using a pea-sized amount. You don't really need a whole lot for this. This stuff is amazing. That is already too cute. I'm gonna take this shade Allure, the pomade one, and I'm gonna use this to kind of build up in the crease, but with that same brush. And this one has more of that mauve undertone to it, so I feel like it'll play well over the color fix. I'm actually gonna switch out brushes, pick up a different melt brush and go into, let's see, this is an 818, go into that same shade. This might work out a little bit better. That brush just seems like it has too much product on it still. Yeah, that's working a lot better over the color fix. I'm gonna take a Sigma E45 and go in with the shade Bliss. I'm gonna take the pomade first because I really wanna see how these work over that color fix. And I'm gonna build it up here on the outer corner. They're definitely layering nice. I do think they work well together. I'm not having any difficulty blending this. I know everyone mentioned there's a bit of a learning curve to these palettes. I'm not a professional by any means. I kinda wish I were though. This makes me curious about the original Groundworks palette. Maybe I really missed out. These are really nice. I'm gonna take that Melt 818 brush. I'm gonna go into the powder of the shade Allure. I'm gonna pick that up and I'm gonna Kind of buff out to the edge here from the shade Bliss. I am really looking forward to Danessa's brush launch. I cannot wait and to see how they work with this palette. Beautiful. That actually blended out really nice. I'm gonna use my E54 Medium Sweeper. I'm gonna go into the shade Crush, the pomade first. I'm gonna use that all over the lid. Not that I think I need to though, because honestly, that color fix is doing enough. But I really wanna try it. Interesting. Maybe I can give it a little bit of a cut crease doing this. I actually cleaned that brush off. I'm gonna pick up the powder shade of Crush and I wanna just place it all over it just to kinda of help set it, but also brighten up this corner. I'm 
I just don't think that was necessary for me to layer over it. But I do think it's really pretty and it did layer well. I looked up close in my mirror. I didn't see it disturbing any of the product over underneath it, so that's good. I want to pick up the shade XO and Evermore and see how they look. So I want to use one of these as a liner. This one's a little bit more of a reddish undertone. This one, I think XO is actually going to be better for doing some type of line work. I'm going to use a melt pencil brush and pick up the pomade. I'm going to need my mirror though because I need to look up close. Maybe see if I can kind of get this look to be a little more dimensional. Multi-dimensional, that's what I meant to say, goodness. I like how it's layering. I think it's working lovely as a liner and actually really easily. So if you struggle with liner, this is working nice. I'm gonna use a Sigma L06 and I'm gonna pat the powder shade of XO on top of that pomade. I'm gonna clean up under my liner here. I'm gonna take some of that hourglass powder on a puff. A little more like that because it looks better with the liner and I don't have too much of the rounded look on that outer corner. I'm gonna finish off my under eyes. I'm gonna take that same XO pomade and I'm gonna use that on my lower lash line. And I'm actually gonna use that in my waterline as well to kind of see how well that holds up. It's actually doing okay. I'm not mad about that. I'm not sure I can use it in my waterline though. I'm gonna to switch to a Sigma E21 smudge brush. I'm gonna pick up the pomade shade for Crush and I'm gonna use that on the inner corner. Under eyes are looking a bit crepey. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's not looking as pretty as I would like. I'm gonna use a Sigma E33 and pick up the powder shade for the shade Smitten. I'm gonna use that to buff out underneath. Ooh, that looks pretty. I do wanna make note, the left eye is looking worse than the right eye. I didn't do anything different. My eyes still have not completely healed from when I was doing swatches. This eye is still quite a bit drier to my left, sorry, my right eye. My right eye looks so much better. So this isn't a product issue for me. It's just the way my eyes are. This one's just more dry than my right eye. The eye is turned out beautiful if I do say so myself, but my face is feeling and looking a little flat without color. I used my Nabla Cupid's Arrow in the shade Ivory for my waterline, and I put on a pair of Kiss wide slack slashes this time around. So I'm gonna use the palette from Vanessa here and I'm gonna take a Blend Bunny brush. I'm gonna go into the shade Smitten, the pomade, and I'm gonna pick that up the best I can here. And I'm gonna use this mauve tone for my blush. I wanna use blush before going in with bronzer. I just wanna see how well this performs. And I think even though the brush is a little big for the pan, I think it's performing pretty nice. I think this blush is actually really nice. Or rather, this pomade is nice for blush. Ooh, shame on me. I bought that new Sephora 99 brush just for this reason. Let me try it, pick it up on this side of the brush here. Oh, and it fits so much better in the pan. Oh, shame on me. Oh yeah, working a lot better. Oh, that is so, so nice. So the pan size is a little large for that brush, but it is perfect for this Sephora, Sephora, Sephora 99 brush. It is perfect. I almost don't want to use bronzer and just 
do nothing but blush and by the way you can totally do that fair or not but it looks really good with fair skin when you just do blush everywhere okay it's gonna be nearly impossible for me to pick up the powder with this brush but I'm gonna pick it up the best I can just kind of lightly dust it more along the back side than the front so far I am super fond of this palette and I was gonna use the Charlotte Tilbury lip liner but I want to use the palette. I've got a Sigma L04. I'm actually going to go into the shade Lovesick and I'm going to use the pomade as a lip liner. Let me clean that off and use the shade Bliss instead. I'm gonna use that entire shade of Bliss on a cream blending brush. This is a E58 brush. I'm gonna use that to color in my lips. Not my best job for lips, but that's okay because I'm gonna just use my Give Beauty, ooh, this nightshade color, I think, oh, that might actually be pretty good for this. I am not a gloss girl. This is a very balmy type of lip gel. It's thick. I don't hate it. It's not the most pleasant sensation for me, but it looks really pretty and juicy. It's not making my lips stick together. Like there are some glosses that are just so thick. They just make my lips have that weird gluing sensation. I'm not getting that from this. I need to bronze up. I am gonna use my new Armani Luminous Silk Bronzer in the shade 90. I'm gonna learn my lesson from the last time and just apply a little bit. I'm gonna go in with the new Dior Forever Glow Maximizer in the shade Pink. I'm gonna pick it up on the back of my hand because I don't really know what I'm in for. I'm gonna go in with a sponge and just kind of pick it up. Ooh, shoot, I like that. Oh, but I love it. It's not bright and like in your face. I wanna get the rosy one for a blush shade. No, no I don't, no I don't wanna get that. I'm happy with the one I have. Let's go in one last time with the Hourglass Powder and just kind of finish off that T-zone a bit. This is a Kristen Dominique Sigma brush. My tummy has been awkwardly grumbling throughout this entire video. I want to start off by saying this finishing powder, even though it's matte and I'm a dry skin girl, it does work well for my dry skin. I think it looks really pretty in my T-zone. I like the airbrushed finish of it. I think the color is perfect, actually. There's no, there's no darkness to it, and it just applies perfectly. So if you're cool toned, this is perfect. Even if you're dry skin or oily, I just, oily, why did I say it like that? <laughs> anyway, just, yeah. Admittedly, I did struggle a little bit with my look. I mean, it's my first time using the Danessa Myricks palette. I really do like it. I felt like I was gonna struggle a little bit more and I genuinely thought that they wouldn't layer as easily as they did or that I would need to somehow change up my techniques or my brushes to kind of get them to work for me. I did use stiffer brushes. Definitely didn't need to use the Color Fix pastel shade, but I really wanted to. I wanted to kind of give it more of a purple look as opposed to more of a pink look. And I think I was able to achieve that. I I think if you layer too much, and I'm going out on a limb here assuming, I think if you layer too much and you've got creasy eyes like mine, it might be a little too much for your lids. This thing feels nice on my eyes. I don't feel like my eyes are heavy. That is something I was concerned about was pomades on my lids feeling heavy. I don't think they feel heavy. I'll be honest, I was really worried my forehead would be the worst part of this today. I still look kind of dewy. I still look a little luminous. 
I forgot to mention my new class of 2024 mom shirt arrived. I'm feeling a little bittersweet, a little, a little happy, a little sad, all kinds of mixed emotions, but <laughs> excited. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. Everything on my face is listed down below. Those links are affiliated. So if you click on those links, thank you for so much for supporting my channel. I appreciate you. Do something for yourself today because you are worth it.